we're going to take a look at reusing uh, items, elements of our, of our journeys and our tests in Virtuoso. It's a really important part of Virtuoso in terms of time saving and getting our, our journeys created quickly. But as well as saving time, what we also do is going to limit your errors. If you've got certain elements of your test that you know are working, you know someone has put the time into to make them work correctly, you can just reuse that. So we're going to look at how that's going to work um, and see what we can do to make that happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into one of our previous journeys from our onboarding training. It doesn't matter if you don't have this particular journey, you can use one of your other journeys that you've created if you want to. Now in here, we've got a few things going on. And we've got this checkpoint for our guest checkout. This is a fairly complicated checkpoint here, adding all the details into the checkout function. Now I think we are likely to need to check out again in various other tests. We'll probably have different items put in the baskets coming in from different areas, but that ability to check out, I think is something we're gonna reuse. So let's see about putting that into our checkpoint library. So what I'm gonna do is click on the three dots next to this checkpoint where it says more here. And see how I say, I can add this checkpoint to the library. And when I do that, it's gonna drop it in and you can see we get a confirmation there to say that that's done. So that's now sitting in our library. Other people in our organization will be able to utilize that checkpoint in their journey as well as me being able to do that. So let's make a new journey. So I'm gonna make one after checkpoint one. So just so we've got to our, um, our URL. So let's go for a new journey from here. And let's call this, um, let's just put this as reusing checkout okay so we can see we're reusing the checkout here and we're in here now first thing we're going to do we need to um, put some items into our um, basket before we're going to be able to check out so let's very quickly add a checkpoint to do that so let's add items to basket let's create that so let's look for blank exploration so if you remember we're looking for items because there's lots of add to bag buttons we need to tell it which one we're going to do and we click add to bag there and let's put another item in just so we can see that that's different so let's look uh, for program crash and then let's click add to bag there as well and then we're going to click on our shopping bag so we're going to be ready for checking out there we go, let's do that, and we're here. Now, I think we're ready to drop in our library checkpoint. Now, actually, I know we're not quite there, but I want to show you how that works. So let's add a library checkpoint. So we've got at the bottom here, add library checkpoint. That's gonna look in our library. I've only got two things in my library. I would be able to search for others if I had more things going on. So let's add our guest checkout library. So let's uh, checkpoint in there. So let's drop that in, and you can see it's dropped that checkpoint in for me. Now, the first thing that you're going to notice because it's a library checkpoint is this is locked. So I can't make changes to this. I, it's a little more complex than that, but I can't just click in here and add steps and make changes. It's not letting me do that. OK, now when we run this, it is actually going to give us an error um, and you'll see why as we go through. So it's adding our items to the bag. It's going to our shopping basket. And is it going to give us our error here? It should give us our error because we haven't got anybody anywhere to write this because we need to click on the go to check out. There we go. It, has, it hasn't been able to find that, so it can't do that. So we need to add another step in here. So that's really important. When you're using library checkpoints, you need to get the application into the right state for the library checkpoint to pick up. So it needs to be in the right uh, situation to be able to do that. So we, of course, need to click go to checkout before we can use that library checkpoint. So if we run that again from the beginning now, it should go through and seamlessly jump from our prepared checkpoint into our library checkpoint. And there you go, you can see it's adding all that information that we prepared previously. So we've saved ourselves loads and loads of work there. Now, if we did want to edit this checkpoint, there's two ways we can do that. If I click on the padlock icon, I can unlock the library checkpoint and that allows me to make changes to it. 
But when we do that, notice it says here, any changes that I make to this checkpoint are gonna impact all of the journeys where this checkpoint is run. So unless you're certain that you want to affect every single journey that uses this checkpoint, you need to be very cautious in making these changes. So really you'd probably only come in and do that if there is something fundamental that's changed in your application, which will be the same across all tests to do that. So that's one option. The other option is we could, if I click here, detach the library checkpoint. So what that's gonna do, if I click detach library checkpoint, it means I can change this one without affecting the original or any other um, instances of this checkpoint. So I'm gonna detach this and now, now I can come in and add steps if I wanted to and do whatever I wanted to do. So we can come in and change those if we want to. It saved us the time in getting these steps in, but then we wanna take it in a slightly different direction. We can then come in and edit it in that way. Big recommendation with your library checkpoints is keep them small. Um, the smaller they are, the more widely they'll be able to be used. If you have a long uh, checkpoint that's really specific, the chances of that being useful in other journeys are gonna be slim. So having little bite-sized checkpoints that you can drop in as and where needed, that's when the library at checkpoints become really, really useful. So this is something you are most likely gonna take advantage of um, in lots of your tests. So um, you wanna have a go at that now. Um, the steps will be in the uh, accreditation for you, so you'll see systems there on what you need to do.